The fugue is probably the most complex musical structure ever invented. Even in your modern times, writing a perfect fugue is still considered a prerequisite in order to obtain a master's degree in music at most conservatories worldwide. Now, by saying all this, I don't mean to scare you. On the contrary, I'll try to explain what a fugue is in very simple terms so that you'll not only understand it but hopefully also appreciate this masterpiece of musical achievement. The origins of the fugue go way back to the early Middle Ages and the first experiments with real polyphonic music. This means music with more than one voice and these voices all sing different notes or melodies but still create a harmonic unity. One of the oldest forms of polyphony is the canon. It's a piece of music in which the voices sing exactly the same melody, just not at the same time. The most famous example of a canon is, without any doubt, the French folk song Frère Jacques, translated into English as Brother John. It's a canon with two voices, and the second voice sings exactly the same as the first, only two bars later. The fugue is a further elaboration of the canon which emerged in the 16th century and which reached its apex in my day, in the early 18th century. Contrary to a canon, the other voices don't repeat the entire music piece but just a small phrase which we call statement or theme. The first voice begins by singing the theme, which is then picked up by the second voice not with exactly the same notes, but usually in the dominant of the key in which the piece is written. So a theme that is written in C is answered by the second voice in G. So, there you have it. A fugue is not just a simple repetition of a melody, it's a game of statement and answer between the various voices. It's a discussion between different people. For example, a first person who says that the weather's nice, and then a second who concurs and says that the weather's nice indeed. But if this isn't enough, when voice two answers the theme just sung by voice one, Voice 1 will sing a so-called counterpoint. It's another melody that stands in contrast to the main theme. So while voice 2 concurs that the weather's nice indeed, Voice 1 adds that there may still be some rain later today. The statement about the nice weather then goes to voice 3, usually in the original key again, while voice 2 will sing the counterpoint about the possibility of rain, and so on. The overall structure of a fugue very much resembles that of a classic essay. It begins with an exposition, and a statement is presented in all of the voices in most cases three or four, whilst the counterpoint adds that bit of contrast, but in the end all agree that the weather's nice. Then follows a development in which the theme is elaborated further. This part allows a lot more freedom, bridges, intermissions, new counterpoints, perhaps there will be a storm as well. Even the theme being put upside down back to front or half or double speed. The discussion grows in intensity, 
The weather's still nice, but there's definitely a storm coming on the horizon. The few grows to a climax. After which, everything falls back into place into the coda or finale. The theme is reconfirmed and eventually wins the day. The weather's nice. Here's an example of a classical fugue, meaning a fugue with a very clear theme and counterpoint and a textbook structure. The theme is quite recognisable. As is the counterpoint. Together, you'll hear them throughout the four voices, sometimes the counterpoint even dominating the theme. I'll play it on my new Forte piano so I can make theme and counterpoint stand out more easily. Please follow me. That's it. I hope that from now on a fugue sounds a bit less daunting to you. After all, listening to a fugue is like listening to a very good conversation. <laughs>